This is recorded on uh, December the 11th, 2003, and uh, we're in the home of uh, Mr. James Reeves, and joining him is uh, Emery Fierce. Uh, these two fellows I've known for a while. Anyway, they were a part of the what we know as the Great Lakes ex experience as far as Navy music is concerned. And we're trying to fill in some of the gaps to... Uh, catch up with with some of the rich heritage that we have in Navy music and there's a certain segment that seems to be almost lost and um, these two gentlemen have quite a bit to to say about that I'm sure so I'm gonna start with uh, with uh, Jim Reeves and uh, like we've done with the others why don't you just start out and tell me where did you hear about this Navy thing how did how did that how did it all start I heard about the uh the Navy music program being open to blacks back in 1943. Uh, it was in the paper, in a black newspaper. So I wrote a letter to the Navy Department volunteering because I had finished college as a music major and I'd heard that the white boys were being offered bandmasterships in the Navy program. But when I got the answer back, I knew it was a fluke because they told me to go down to the naval base in Norfolk and just volunteer and then they would see what they could do. And I knew then that they were trying to get me into the mess attendance uh, branch and I didn't follow up on it at all. Then I was drafted and when I got to Richmond and they swore in 400 of us at the same time in Richmond, Virginia, 400 black men. They offered us an opportunity that we, some people couldn't refuse. They said, we, we can send you to Bainbridge, Maryland, or we can send you to Great Lakes. If you go to Bainbridge, four weeks, and you're back home with your women. But the other places up in Illinois, Great Lakes, we could send you there, but it's cold up there, below freezing. And as fast as we train them up there, we send them to the South Pacific and making cannon powder out of them. So I was in charge of the bus that went up from Norfolk. And I wrote a note to the fellows and said, don't pay any mind to this guy. Come on and go with me and be an able-bodied seaman because you're from down in Tidewater and you know what they do with, with black Navy people. They make mess attendance of them. And only 17 people went with me to Great Lakes. And I know because I was in charge. And they try to make the person in charge. They picked the person in charge with the, with the most education. And how many started out now? 400. 400 and 400 17. From the state of and 17 decided to go with you to Great Lakes. 17, it decided to go to Great Lakes. And while I was there, I was in a, in a meeting one day, and then Bowden came by and said, uh, anybody in here play an instrument? Wait a minute, now this is, this is in Great Lakes now? This is in Great Lakes. Okay, so you're already in Great Lakes? Yeah. All right. And then Bowden came by and said, anybody in here play an instrument? We, we, we trying to start another band over on and Robert Small. I was in Camp Lawrence and I raised my hand and he took me with a few other people he had recruited over to Robert Small's and he said there's a bass over there tune it up. So I went over and I didn't tune it up to the piano or anything I just took the strings and said it sounds like a G to me it sounds like a D it sounds like an A it sounds like an E he said, now, play that thing that uh, Jimmy, uh, not Jimmy Lunchford, uh, Count Bass's band plays. You know that that bass solo that they have in 1 o'clock? I said, yeah, I know that. He said, play that. I, said, I played it. He 
said, okay, that's good. He said, okay, go get that tuba over there. I told him I was tuba and string bass. They play the, uh, play that Sousa March, the, the bass plot to Stars and Strike Forever. I knew that. Oh, the break string. Huh? He didn't give you any music or anything? No music at all. Okay. Now, now, before you continue, uh, tell me for the benefit of the people that look at this, who Bowden he is. He man in charge of the, the black music in Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. He was the one who selected you. Mm -hmm. And I was selected by him and I was proud of it. And I he, didn't know who he was then. Okay, now, then. he was in uniform? Yes. He, he was in uniform. What was he wearing? I mean... He got a sail suit, just like mine. Okay. Only had some more stripe dance. Okay, on. so he's a first He's a first class musician. Yeah, first class musician. All right. And so I was selected, and, and he took my jacket off at that moment and took it into the next room. And somebody sitting at the sewing machine sold a Chevron on. Third class musician. Just like that? Just like that. I had only been at Great Lakes six weeks then. Now this is in 1943. 44. 1944. January. 1944. January 1944. That's right. Now let's give Emory an opportunity to come up to this point. Okay, well, uh, I was uh, in high school playing the Tuskegee band when the, the first guys uh, joined the Navy. It was a fellow named William Wiley. And because uh, he was a college kid, he just finished college. It must have been. 41, 42, something like that. Must have been around 42, I think. And he went to Quonset's Point. And then there's another young fellow who went somewhere, but I didn't pay that any more attention. But when I went into the Navy, I was drafted. And I was there, and I had nothing else to do, so I sent for my clarinet, because television was not invented. You didn't have radios or anything, so uh, I'd go over in the corner when we had a little time to ourselves and, and just noodle on the clarinet. And the fellow came over to say, why don't you, he was, he was one of us, in the, I don't know, he was in boot camp. He says, why don't you go over to Small and, and try out for the band? I said, I don't play that well. I, I'm just out here just noodling around. Okay, excuse me, for, excuse me for half a minute. So you, you were drafted. I was drafted. That's and right. sent to Great Lakes. At Lawrence, Camp Lawrence. Okay. In Great Lakes. All right. And so they kept bothering me. And, and this, he worried me so bad. And then I just went on over there, so he let me alone. And I went over there with my little clarinet, uh, uh, and a uh, fellow named Noble Sims uh, was there. And he said, uh, play the Thunderer March. And I says, I know that. You want to play, I have any better sense. And then, <laughs> I said, I, uh, he, do you play this? It was a Thunderer March, headed down. And I said, I know that. I can play it. I didn't ask you to know it, just play it. So I turned the music upside down and played it, because I knew it that well, because that's what we played at Tuskegee. And everything he gave me to play, we had played at Tuskegee. He said, okay, you play saxophone. I said, oh, yeah, you play saxophone. And he says, okay, they sent me back to, back to, the, uh, to my boot camp uh, company and sent me home. Uh, and I sent me home. I mean, I got out, it was six weeks. Sent me out of six weeks. Most of them stayed eight or nine. And when they finished, and after those six, well, anyhow, they told me that I went back to Great Lakes after that little time was up. So you had a boot leave. I had a whatever it was. Yeah. They, well, they said I had finished, but I had never done that much. We hadn't even gotten to shoot a rifle, never shot a rifle. But you were finished with boot camp. I was finished with boot camp. And you came home for a while. I came home, yeah, on a little leave they gave you. Yeah. I came back, and they, they sent me to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Now, when I, when I got off the train, all dirty, because they put you on the, in, the, in, the, in the front of the plane, of the trains, and, you know, the, you, the black people sat nearest to the smoke, because they didn't have air conditioning, it was hot, you know, all those April, so you let the windows down, this smoke, I came all smoked up, looked like something else, but anyhow, when they got me to Chapel Hill, uh, they immediately wanted to send me back, because they wanted a trumpet player, and I was a clarinet player. Now, this was what year now? This was April 1944. This is April 1944. No, it was June 1944, I'm sorry, I went June. April 19 June of 44, so that first band was already it was down. Already there. I can't, I came as a replacement for someone who, whatever. Uh huh. So I came, and that's how I, I got started. Okay, so you were down in Chapel Hill before um, Reeves arrived with the other no, group. No, I was after him. After yeah. him. Yeah. Okay. 
All we right. sent for a trumpet player. And okay. And that's the, you know, they sent me. And then, then, of course, uh, Great Lakes didn't want me. Okay. Back. And say keep him. So oh. I was an extra clarinet player. Okay, so <laughs> I, we've got to get caught up with Reeves now because there was a band already in Chapel Hill that had been transferred to Hawaii. And the band that you were in, Reeves, and that Emory came to was the band that followed the first band that was there. That's correct. That's right. Okay, now let's go back and get catch Reeves up to, to here. Okay, when the uh, when we got there, to the band that I was in, got there, the other band, B1 band, was already there, and they were packing up. And we were taking over their quarters. Mm -hmm. And they were going to be shipped up that afternoon. Mm -hmm. So we had a day or so to get acquainted. And mm -hmm. I knew one guy in there, I knew Skinner. Mm -hmm. Skinner and I had gone to school together. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the guys I just met at, in passing. And I guess we had about 10 or 15 hours to meet with them. And then they shipped up. And uh, we took over their places. Now, you have this band, it's what, 22 pieces? No, no. This is a 40 piece, 44 piece band or 41 piece band? Around that size. Yes. Okay. Now you were shipped there as a unit. You all yes. went together. Went together. Okay. Now who was the leader of that band? Smart. Smart. Chief Smart. Chief Smart. I don't know his first name. Okay. Then he went with you, or he met you there. He met us there. Yeah. Uh huh. I, never, I didn't ever see any white folks and white people until I got there. Uh huh. Francois and all those folks were all in, all along with us. Okay. So now Francois, this was a name that had come up. We talked about it a little bit earlier. This is one of the people that were working with the bands in Great Lakes. Yes. As, a, as I understand. And he was a first class musician. Okay. And uh, no, I think he was. He was boarding me where he must have been. Uh, I think he was second class. He got promoted after we got there. I don't know. Okay. But he was in charge. I thought he was going to be our leader. Uh huh. But most of the time, he didn't do much of anything. He uh -huh. did all the conducting. So you took over the duties of the original B1 band down yeah. in uh, Chapel Hill. Now go ahead and tell your story about Chapel Hill.